Okay, so let's felt a little pouch. So the main things that you're gonna need, you'll need a pair of scissors, and it's better if you can get the ones that have got the really sharp point, but I don't have any, I can't find mine. So that's okay. Um, some soap, um, some warm water in a sprayer, the fiber that you want to felt, and this is a merino silk blend. Um, if you know anything about wet felting, silk doesn't actually felt, but I think that there'll be enough merino in here that it should felt nicely anyway. Um, it's a good idea to have a mat to work on. And um, this mat here is this stuff here which I got from Ikea um, and it's the grippy stuff that they use for in the drawers. I've also seen it at Bunnings. Um, I really like it because you can reuse it heaps and heaps and heaps and heaps and heaps. It's really durable. Um, you can use bubble wrap or, you know, something like this as well if you want to, but um, yeah, I prefer this one. And the, the texture on it is... Um, is nice and strong so it lasts for a long time um, and yeah I really prefer it I also use it to make my template so that's the other thing you're gonna need is a template I'll talk about at the end how I made this template but I think um, it will make more sense to you after after I've done it because I'll show you how I cut it and stuff to get the flap and everything um, and then after I've done it yeah, I'll explain at the end. It'll make more sense. Okay, so the other thing you'll need is um, I've got two bowls here, which I use for hot water and cold water. Um, but you could use um, sink. I usually use a double bowl. I've got a double bowl kitchen sink, so I normally put just run hot water in one and cold water in the other um, and do it that way. Um, now, when I say hot water or warm water, it shouldn't be so hot that you can't touch it, um, particularly the water that you put in the sprayers because it will just warp, warp your spray bottle and then um, you'll halve the life of it. So it only needs to be warm water. It should be water that you can put your hands in. If you can't put your hands in it, um, then it's probably too, too hot. And, I mean, if it's the main thing that helps things felt down is the difference between how hot the hottest water is and how cold the cold water is so if you've got really cold water and warm to you can only just put your hands in it type hot water then um, you should be fine okay so we'll just lay out our template sorry I might be a little bit hard to see it against the mat and we'll just pull out some of this fiber um, Like I said, I've never used any of this fiber for felting before, so it's going to be interesting. I really wanted to try it out um, because it's quite nice. And I'm hoping that I can do it in such a way that the colors don't muddle too much. So what we're going to do is start out by making layers one way and you want to make sure that you overlap particularly when you lay this way you want to make sure that you overlap on this these sides and you want to make sure that your fiber overlaps itself a bit as well Hang it down. You want your layer to be reasonably thin. We're going to put quite a few layers on, so don't um, don't be too worried about it being too thin. Okay. Because the thinner it is, the easier it is for the water to penetrate. So then we just want to. Spray it down. And we 
don't get it quite wet. And I don't know whether you can see on the video, but when the water's penetrated through it, it'll actually look it'll look saturated. And that's what you need to do. Get all the air out from underneath it, nice and wet. Um, a lot of people put salt uh, soap in their water, but I don't because um, you can't use the sprayer for anything else. Then, well, you can, but it's a pain. It's really I find it really hard to get water out of out of sprayers. So I'm just going to put some of this fibre down the middle. Some of it in there. And remember, just take your time, not in any sort of rush. Okay. So. moment I'm just making sure that the water penetrates right through the layer. Okay. So I'm going to do a layer this way and because I'm going this way I want to make sure I have plenty of overlap this along these edges. Down again. Let's see, we're starting to get a bit of a thicker layer going now. make sure that all the bits outside of the resist are wet as well. Okay, so now I just get my soap and I just lightly rub it on top. Soap's a bit old. Just to get a little bit of soapiness happening. Because that's the other problem too is that when you can when you use soap in your water you can just end up with too much soap. in my hands as well. I'm just going to gently massage it just a little bit. I'm just going to help it come together just a little bit. What I did there was I just smoothed out a little scuffed up section. And this is mainly to help make sure that there's soap in all the layers when we go to do it properly as well. Okay, so 
Next thing I'm going to do is just find the edge of my resist in here. Pick this up, flip it over, and then I'm going to fold over all these edges. Don't worry too much if it gets a little bit bunched up. It's surprising how much that sorts itself out. And the one thing you do have to watch is on these sharper corners that it doesn't just pull right through. Not too important on these initial layers, but it will matter more if you allow it to happen every single time that you fold a layer over. Okay, so we are going to lay down some more fibre and I'm going to go the same way I did last time. Do try to fold it in a little bit tighter, it'll make it resist a little bit tight, or make it um, felt down a little bit nicer. Now, because I've been wetting it all along, it is actually wet, well wet enough. So I am going to put a lot of soap on my hands. I'm going to put some soap on here. Just be careful around the edges because where you've put the edges in, they're not going to be quite as firmly set, so it's easy to scuff them up if that makes sense. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to gently rub the surface with my hands. So I'm pressing down and rubbing it around in a circular motion. Not, I'm not actually like brushing to and fro like this because you can upset the fibres a bit if you do that. And at the moment I just want the fibres to sort of settle down together a little bit. Uh, camera, so the videos changed completely. My camera went flat, so um, I couldn't wait to change it because my son's having a nap right now. So, anyway, here we go. So, we're still just rubbing it. We could probably rub it a little bit more vigorously if things feel 
a bit firm. You can see here that they're starting to firm up. When I pull it up, there's not really coming away in layers. I'm going to do it a bit more. I want it to be um, kind of tight on the resist here. I mean, I want this to be a little pouch, so um, I want it to be quite well felted anyway. If I was doing it for some, maybe the booties or something like that, I might not felt it quite so hard because um, I want them to be softer for the little baby's feet. So you can see that's reasonably well felted. I think it could do with some more. What I'm going to do here is just rub it. I'm just rubbing it into the actual mat now. So when I do that, I'm not really felting that much on this side. I'm felting it more on the other side. How's this side going? Mm, not too bad. Could do with some more. You don't really want to feel like any of your fibers are coming away from it by itself. And the more you do this rubbing up the edge here like this, the nicer your little edges will be. So that is not too bad now. Give it a look. Yep. Looks pretty good. Still not 100% felted. That's okay. We don't need it to be at the moment. Okay, so now what we need to do is start thinking about our flap. So, I think for this one, I want the flap to come almost all the way down. In order to do that, I need to cut part of this up here. So then I can fold it down. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my pouch and know that if I cut up here, so I'll cut along here like this and there, then that flap there will do twice what I cut. So to have a flap that goes almost to the end, I want to cut it a third from the top, so about here. This will make more sense once I've cut it. So what I'm going to do, so I'm just going to grab at the edge like this and I'm just going to try and get my scissors in there and make a little hole. And then I'm going to start cutting. Now I'm just going to peek in there and you need to make sure, I don't know whether you can see there, that you're cutting through all the layers there. Okay. Just going to cut through, chop, 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 chop. You try and cut as straight as you can, but don't panic if you haven't cut it straight. You can trim it later and it just might mean that it won't go down quite as far as you thought. Okay, so I've cut the line all the way down there and as you can see, I cut it totally not straight, but that's okay. We can work with that. Then what we need to do is cut down the sides here. 
you just give it some extra personality. Okay. So, cut down the side here to the corner and you should just be able to, this is where the really sharp scissors are really helpful because you can easily just push through there. So now you can see you've got this flap here, right? And you can pull your resist out. And then there, see, you can see how the flap works with the pouch, right? So now we need to keep on felting. Now to get a nice edge on these cut edges, you do the same as you did before, except a little bit gentler. Okay, and you can rub it back and forth like this. Okay, I'm just going to work on the flap here for a little bit. These fibres that are on the inside here are probably not felted down as much, so you probably just want to be a little bit careful with them. You don't scuff it up too much. More on this side. Don't be hugely worried about your edges because we can trim those up as well. And you can just work as well like that. Okay, now to work on the actual pouch, what you need to do from now on is put your hand inside. You can't do it like this anymore over the top of where the thing is because there's no resist in there anymore and if you do that you'll felt the inside. So what I'm doing here is I'm not actually felting the inside, I'm working on the outside. And what I want to do is, if you can, if you look here, when I hold this straight, you'll see that they're kind of, it's a bit bunched there. That's where your edge was. So I'm just trying to flatten that out a bit. See there, that's a little bit flatter. Did what I totally told you not to do, but if you're careful, you should be all right. And be a little bit rougher with it now. It's pretty well felted down. Just be careful. Make sure you open it every now and again. Work on this flap a little bit more. Now what we can also do okay, this flap's a little bit wide on this side so we can push it together a little bit here when we are trying to felt it and that'll help make it a little bit smaller. On this side. We're kind of like encouraging it to condense this way. I'll show you what that looks like there. See it's come in this way on this side a bit and we'll do the same on this side. Really want to work 
on this edge here. If you want to, you can turn it inside out. Just work on these edges a bit. I'll just put my hand in there to help give it some stability and stop it from felting together. Okay, so for me, that looks pretty well done. I don't mind mine looking a little bit uh, organic, I guess, in shape. Let's try and get this. This edge is a bit flappy. Okay. So it's going to be a bit out, about it for me for felting, and you can see now that when I pull up better to see on the lid here it doesn't really arch at all it's all one thing okay so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna fill up my bowls with water one cold and one hot Okay, so now that you've got it pretty well felted, um, it shouldn't be in too much of a risk of felting together anymore. So this here pocket here is going to be pretty safe. So what I'm going to do is put it in the cold water first, and I put a little bit of ice in mine because I've got an ice machine, but you don't have to do that. And that is already going to help it come together a bit and then what we're going to do is, is put it in the hot water and I'm just going to squeeze it so I can make sure that the hot water goes all the way through it and then I'm going to put it in the cold water and when you put it in the cold water you should feel it stiffen up a bit and that's when it's going to contract. Now, you can do this as many times as you like. The more you do it, um, the more it's going to felt, the stiffer and um, the firmer and stiffer it'll get. You can already see that this is starting to, you might, well, you might not be able to see it actually. It's starting to kind of ripple and warp a little bit. Um, I think a little bit of that is because it's got the silk in it, but Merino does that. Um, really easily so the more you felt it the more it will do that um, so it's up to you what you want I mean you might like that texture you might not um, for baby booties I certainly wouldn't allow it to do that so I'm only going to do one more because I don't want mine to be super um, 
super duper felted, I think. I'm not sure. Oh, maybe a little bit more. Maybe I might do it a bit more. Maybe I'll do it a bunch more and we'll see how we go. And then it will be nice and thick at least anyway. Because the more it does that, it'll get thicker. Be nice and thick too. Cold. And you can see I can easily put my hands in this hot water. It's really kind of warm. And once you've dunked it from cold to warm a few times, it, uh, it cools down a bit anyway. It. that's as much as I think I want to do you can see there the little pouch there okay so before I finish up I'll put this towel down so we can see it a bit easily easier hopefully we'll just have a little talk about this resist so pretty much what you want to do if you've got an idea in mind of what size pouch you want to make um, I didn't, I just made it whatever size, I don't care. Um, what you need to do is think about your flap, which as you saw was a third, because if you say fold that down and, and cut it there, if you fold it and cut it there, then that means we'll get all this fabric plus the stuff on the back side. So you'll get, it'll come down to there and to there. So... What I would do is I draw out the size of the pouch that I wanted. Then I'd add a third to that again for the flap. And then I'd increase it by about 10%. So if you have a look at this here, you can see that on this little pouch here, it's maybe about a centimeter or so. So you might not even have to do 10%. Um, it kind of, it, it's so variable, it depends upon your fibre um, and if you've never felt it with it before then it's going to be a little bit unsure. That's why I tried, why well, I wanted to make this pouch so I could try it out before I made some booties out of it. I think it's going to make quite sweet little booties to be honest. Um, so there's a little bit of give and take. I mean with pouches it doesn't really matter. I think it's just an example. I've had two um, different fleeces of alpaca, one felted beautifully and packed down really really nicely and made a really nice soft um, thick felt without without having any of this lumpy lumpiness um, and the other one I could barely get it to felt at all so it's really important to do experiments that's what these little pouches are great for um, the last little things that we that we need to do, you've got a couple of options. With this pouch, you could leave it as is. If you didn't want to put a fastener on it, you could put a little press stud fastener on it. Or what I do is I put a little slit in there and then I just sew a button on the other side. Um, you don't really need to use your buttonhole stitch on your sewing machine, but you certainly could if you wanted to. Um, they hold up quite well. This is another little one that I made a while ago and the flap's not quite as big on this one and um, you can see that it holds up quite well there. I just cut a little slit in it. That's it. Cut a little slit, sewed my button on and then it just goes on there just fine. Doesn't um, 
it doesn't really fray too much. I put my little USB sticks in this, so I use it quite a bit, and um, and it seems to be holding up all right. It's all going to depend on how thick your fabric is and um, how much you felted it down. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll catch up with you guys again later. Thanks very much. Oh, oh, and don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more. I'll certainly be doing more felting videos. Um, like the booty one and I'm thinking about doing a little hat and um, and a few other ones particularly with resist they work out really nicely so yeah don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch you guys again later thanks bye